Yeah. But you didn't have best meal of the week. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so Dave, have you allowed yourself to start thinking about if it's the sixth inning and we're up two, I'm going with this pitcher. If we're up one in the seventh, I'm going with this pitcher. Like kind of assigning roles in your head. Early on, it'll for the most part of the older guys. You know, we try to bring those young guys along, but the stuff that some of them have. Just like the other day inside Gackle, was unbelievable for him. It was, it was nothing but strikes, and he didn't go below 97 with a slider and a curveball and change up. Um, but then it kind of goes away a little bit. You know, it's just the way it is when they're young. But we, we Coach Hoff and I have discussed it many times. That we're not just going to – going into the season, we're going to say that guy's on the Because we feel like we've got guys who can just finish the game, whether they go two innings, one inning. We have to match up a little bit. We we'll just kind of see what we see during the game. But uh, yeah, I can't sit here and say that a certain pitcher is going to be our closer. Do you like the way the outfield has crafted together? Yeah, I mean, you always wish you could have one more. It's just what coaches are. Um, you know, whether it was a big power left handed bat or something like that. But, you know, Kendall has, Diggs has done a tremendous job and he just continues to hit and be a tough out. And he, he plays with a different swag look about him now that I really like. And, you know, Wilmsmeyer in center is a really good defender. He didn't hit much in the fall. I just think new program, maybe just a lot of self inflicted pressure, you know, going from one SEC school to another. Uh, but he's swinging the bat well now for us. And even if he doesn't hit, he's going to play defense with this team. And then left field, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a battle. Um, you know, Jones hit a home run inside because it went up like 415 feet. So we give him a home run when they hit it inside and he's hit some balls good. And, and, you know, then you look at Edmondson, he popped one the other day in a big situation, also had another hit. And, and, and Lovich, the left handed hitter, you know, always can use a lefty against some of those crafty righties. And, He's 20 pounds up from what he was in the, in the fall, and I just feel like he's he's going to he's going to make us make a push to play as well. So I really didn't answer your question. I think two of the spots are taken. Left field's still a battle, but you know if if we could get Jones's swing it like we know he does in batting practice, because he hits the ball harder in, day in day out every swing, because every every swing is recorded, and it's it's pretty amazing. Dave, I think the other day Bybee left his start early. I don't think he's starting today. Do you have an update on him? Yeah, he's got a little bit of his hamstring issue. He did it over the holidays working out. I guess he tweaked it in the summer a little bit. It bothered him a little bit in the fall ball. But it, he's he, we're not throwing him this weekend, obviously. He's not throwing today. Um, he's a little irritated with that. He wants to pitch. But we, we don't need to throw you. you just, we need you to get healthy. Because uh, you've been throwing the ball good. You got another pitch or two this year and bigger and stronger. It throws a lot of strikes. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a light hammy. He's just got to, he's got to keep it stretched out. And, you know, I'm hoping that it's maybe just one of those things that once it gets over the hump, it's, it's, it's done. You mentioned Tucker Holland, Mike Redshirt this year. What's his, what's he dealing with? So he's, yeah, yeah I don't know if I can tell you. It's not, it's not a surgery. It's more about, um, it's a bone issue uh, that is bothering him and might be just a situation where we have to let that heal for a while. And, you know, there's no reason to try to rush him because he could really get hurt. Would you, it's always would, an excitement when baseball's rolling around, but you had to bring in extra tables today. Is, uh, uh, have you noticed that it's even more this year? Yeah, it was great. I mean, I didn't bring him in, but. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, uh, it, it was pretty cool to see um, this many people come out. It was a nice day. Um, there's a lot of hype on the baseball program right now, and they know that we have a chance to be pretty good. And I think, you know, it's just all coming together for us. I think that if we can have a good month, it'll be just as big next next month as well. So exciting for me as a coach, and our whole staff came to this one. They're all back with the players right now. but. Yeah, it just kind of you know, keeps you motivated a little bit. We're motivated as it is, but it, it, it always helps. Dave, would you like to go Smith, Molina, Tiger, and then Bobby or somebody for the opening weekend, or what yeah. do you think? It'll 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 probably be those three for sure. The first three you mentioned, and then uh, Bobby could go on that Monday. Um, it could be Colin Fisher, true freshman, who threw extremely well last weekend. I mean, it was really good, and his velocity is going up. The command is still there, and. 
he could throw his change up in his curveball anytime he wants for a strike. And boy, that's special when you're left handed and you can do that. Yeah, how would you assess Molina's preseason? Well, he had a really good fall. Although he didn't throw a ton of strikes in the fall, he did, we didn't score on him. You know, a lot of two, two, three, two counts, strikeout, fly ball. We didn't hit him. The other day, he, we got him, and uh, he got behind the count. And I, I think somebody, is that when uh, somebody Diggs, hit a home Diggs, run? Diggs, huh? Yeah, Diggs went down and got one. And uh, was that off? Uh, did Diggs hit the home run off of Smith? He hit one off of both of them. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. I mean, left on left against two really good lefties. So, uh, yeah, I mean, how do I assess it? He's going to be better than, than he's been his first couple outings, I really feel. You and mentioned that was the first day you did the starting lineup, kind of loaded up on one side. How good was it to see them get after a pitcher that you know is good yeah. and get someone that y'all hadn't really hit before? Yeah, they fought him. I mean, even the outs were hard. They were tough out. They had to, he had to fight to get them out. Pitch count was getting up. And I commented about it after the, the scrimmage. Both teams really did a good job of, uh, you know, you had Molina going against Smith, and you had both teams make two quick outs. And then the third out, they had to fight. They both went through 20 pitches, one through 18, and they both had two outs under five pitches. So our hitters did a good job. And that's that's how you win on a Friday night. You get that starter's pitch count up. You get to that bullpen. The team coach started getting a little nervous, thinking, I still got two more games to play. We're gonna, you know, you, you have to do a lot of thinking when your starter pitch count gets up on, on game one of a series. Speaking of the bullpen, what did yours look like at the back end? Uh... Well, you know, I kind of answered it earlier. Not, we're not, going to just, you know, designate a closer or announce a closer. We're going to use probably three or four guys and just let them go. I mean, if you put McIntyre in the seventh, he may better be probably be better in the eighth and the ninth. Um, you know, you could do that with Gage Wood as well. A few other guys. You could. There's a couple of our freshmen that, honestly, I trust them to go get the last three outs of the game. Now, I don't know if I want them going to get a bunch more right now. But for, for one inning, adrenaline, everything going on, they throw it over the plate and your stuff's really good. You mentioned the conversation uh, you had with Hagen about in there about maybe pulling him an inning early. Uh, what was his kind of reaction to that? How yeah. difficult is that for him? You know, he just kind of looked at me funny. Hagen is a great teammate and he's never going to say much. You know, he's going to, you know, I know what he's thinking if when it happens, because it's going to happen. If we got a six run lead in the sixth, and he's up to 85 pitches, he doesn't need to go 105. He doesn't, you know, these are the things that, and a lot of times I have to talk, I tell Coach Hobbs, we need to get him. Because, you know, the pitch coach is let him go back, let him go back. But it's, now is important, but later is more important. So if we can save an inning here and there, it, it might help us down the road. You've done that with a lot of good pitchers in the past. Do you ever, ever say, hey, why, why don't you call Hagen and explain to him why you're in the big leagues now or you're in AAA or whatever, why this is a good Yeah, one? I mean, that'd be something if we had him fighting us, but he, he's not going to fight us on it. He gets it. I mean, he's been in all the roles. He's been a middle reliever. He's been a closer. He's been a starter. He He's grown up, you know, from that, those experiences as far as – no, and I don't need to go out in the first inning and throw every pitch 99 miles an hour. Um, we, I need to be able to pitch at 95, 97, and we'd rather have him go 93, 97 when he needs it in the fifth. And so you, you, you have to hold some back, and he has to pitch, you know, use his change up and his cutter. And he's, he's learning to do that, and he knows for him to be a starter here and at the next level, he's got to go out there and show people that. From your seat, how have you seen the chemistry continue to develop with Stovall and Aloy? It's been good. It's yeah. been good, you know, because Peyton didn't play catch all fall when we were on the field. He was doing all his rehab and all his work. So when we came back first day of, of practice, Aloy was playing catch with like Jared Sprague Lott, who's his roommate. Well, he's more of a third baseman. And so I went up to Peyton and I said, hey, you're going to play catch with that guy? And then I went, you know, and he goes, yeah. And then Aloy, I said, you're going to play pet. And so now they are, that's just so important. That's just the way it works. They need, I told them, they just need to know each other. They need to have a feel if they're going to flip it or backhand it. Or they just need to know each other and uh, know the spin of the ball, everything. But I feel like behave is really, really easy to get along with. He's not super loud. He's very, he's fun to be around. The guys all like him. And, uh. I think he's really enjoying his time here. Yeah, Peyton said he was kind of quiet. It took him a while to start mm -hmm. talking, and then obviously culturally they're just different too. Yeah. But once he kind of opened up, he's been fun to be around. Yeah, he's. Uh, 
I mean, on his visit, we had he wasn't feeling real good on his visit, and he ended up going and getting his gallbladder taken out. I don't know if you guys know all this. Well, yeah. oh, that's a good story down the road for you. <laughs> he was going to go play in the Cape, and after he committed to us at, from the airport, I gave him one more shot. I called him at the airport, forgot on flying, and committed, and canceled his other trips because he might be playing at wearing another unit. It is scary, but uh, he went back. He, he'd been having problems. He played with stomach issues all fall, all spring last year, and uh, took his gallbladder out. He's been fine ever since. So, uh, yeah, he was super quiet on his visit, and we hoped he liked it. We felt like he did, but uh, that's kind of just his personality. Well, maybe if you need your gallbladder removed, you're not as talkative too, right? <laughs> I know I wouldn't be. I'd be a little bit <laughs> irritable. <laughs> a lady at our table wants to know. Uh -oh. she, she said that since you know the schedule for 12 years, are you committed for 12 more years coaching? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, man, I'd be old guy. Though. I'm already old enough. But no. Tell her. I saw uh, D1 baseball had Peyton Stovall as like the number 48 second baseman, which I thought was interesting. Uh, do you think that's probably good for him mentally to yeah. kind of fly under the radar a little bit and just go out there and play ball and see what happens? Yeah. So I, I got, I got that. I looked about. I know two names that were one and two, and then I just put it, moved on to the next tweet or whatever it was I was looking at. But uh, they don't know. They don't know yet. They know what could be, uh, but he has to do or think about it. His first year he played first base. His second year he was fielding really well. But his arm was bothering him all year, and it's hard to swing a bat when your shoulder's got a tear in it. And uh, he fought through it. It's a different swing now. It's different. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he's on a mission. Let's just put it that way. He was below Ethan Bates, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I love Dave, Ethan, but anyway. <laughs> Dave, I know it's a couple years away, but I think the SEC tournament yeah. format for the coming years, when it goes to 16 teams, was announced. Just what are your thoughts on that format? Yeah, it starts in 25. and. I, my thoughts, uh, the way, so we only had so many options. Um, so when we broke down an option, that was the option that I preferred. I think what it does, it gives the teams that did well during the league, the grind, a chance to get a buy or two. Now, I don't, I'm not in love with single elimination, but if you finish, what, in the top four, you get two days off. You finish in the top maybe five, six, seven, eight, you get one day off, something like that. And you, the way you look at it is, okay, I would hate to be the number one seed having to play a 16, and they they didn't throw the race on the weekend because they knew they weren't they have to win the tournament. It just it, this makes more sense. You can line your pitching back up, and if you finish way down, and hopefully it doesn't happen to us, then you should have to win some games there to get in. And uh, but at least you still get to go to the tournament. You get to work out a little bit. You win, you play again. You win, you get to play again. You win two, you're probably in the championship game, I think. So. I think that's the way it works. You could win yeah. three games and win the championship, and man, that's a lot better. That's a lot better than having to win four, maybe even five, and maybe even six if you lost first day. You, you mentioned pitching in there. You know, Parker obviously caught most yep. of the games last year. Where does he fit in in the, the catching yeah. depth chart? Or the you pitcher? know, I don't want to go through one, two, or three because it's really tight. Uh, you know, and the thing is, it's changing the subject a little bit. Polk has done really well. I mean, he's hit the ball like home runs, doubles, and he's caught better, um, you know, but with Roland, I mean, he's the experienced guy as far as here, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a tough one. Um, so then, then it might come down to who's going to hit. So, you know, if one guy's really hitting, then that's the guy that's probably going to catch over somebody else if they're all th other things are equal. I mean, there won't be one guy that's catching every game this year. It'll be broken up between probably three. And, uh, you know, midweek games, if, 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 if Helford catches a game on the weekend or two, whatever he does, but if he's not the everyday starter, you're going to see him a lot on the, in the midweek. And this then it becomes tough because you got to develop guys. So if you got a freshman and a senior, I mean, what would you do as a coach? You're probably going to play the guy if everything's the same. The other guy's a better hitter. And that's your future. Uh, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. The best catching depth you've had. Oh yeah. Numbers wise. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually you hope you have one good one and real good one and one that's going to be. Just needs a little time. You had a third guy that plays another position. You know, you you that's a really good catching situation with having two and a half, so to speak. 
but having really four guys that could catch, and it's a, it's a great situation, but it's also a hard situation. The, the scrimmage the other day, what were your takeaways from that? The two or which one? Both of them? Yeah, whatever you want to comment. I guess the, was it the Saturday one that was close? Yeah, well, I actually loved it. I mean, the, the, the team that was older, starters, whatever you want to call them, they were, I mean, they jumped out four to nothing after, and they chipped away and took advantage of an air and a, a walk. And that's how you beat good pitchers, you know, they give you extra outs. And, uh, you know, they also left a runner third with one out, give the pitcher credit. Um, so there, there was the fifth run they should have had. And then the next inning, the other team comes out, gets a hit, bang, scores a run. And the next thing you know, they had a grand slam or something like that, and they're, they're winning. And then I challenge the team when they come in. I said, this is going to happen during the season. You guys need to respond. we got to lead off single and then a homer. First two guys, they have to lead again. So it was it was good both ways. You got to see a lot there. Coach, listen time. Okay. Thanks, man.